Lord this morning. Everybody blessed? Everybody doing good? Let's stand together, if you will. Hallelujah. Welcome to this beautiful Palm Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the book of Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning in the ninth verse, as Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed him were shouting in praise and adoration, Hosanna to the Son of David, Messiah, blessed, praised, glorified is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the heavens. When he entered Jerusalem, all the city was trembling with excitement, saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. But we know who he is. Amen. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Father, we come together today Thank to worship you, you. We come to give you glory and honor. We come to declare your greatness, Lord Jesus. Have your way in this service. Be exalted and glorified. And may your name greatly be praised, Lord. And we shout, Hosanna. Hosanna. Worthy is the King. Worthy are you of all praise, glory, and honor. Holy Ghost, move by the power of your Spirit. Move, we ask. May hearts be saved. May lives be changed. May yokes be lifted, burdens be removed. But above everything, Lord, you be exalted and glorified. And we'll give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah.
Come on. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. The room was brighter. Yes. And when I went outside later that, the grass was greener. Yes. I mean, just yes. things were lighter. Yes. Things I didn't even know I was carrying. Exactly. He exactly. changed everything. He, now, he did it back then. Yes. And, and, but that was the moment that I realized it. Yes. That was the moment I took hold of it for myself. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's what Praise it's all he's about. He's done the best Hallelujah. has yet to come. Amen.
thank you, Dana, for describing something that I personally can relate to in the exact words you shared it. I don't know about anybody else, but I relate to it in the exact way you expressed it. Everything got brighter. Everything got lighter. Things changed. Salvation is about a transformative work. And I know we don't live by feelings. We can't live by them. But there's a feeling. There is a feeling. When things get lighter in your life, when things get brighter in your life, you feel it. It should show. It should actually radiate from you because who is in you? When that happens, when salvation happens, somebody has moved inside. And that should radiate from us. And that's what I was hearing you express. And it just radiated as you shared it. And that's how the Lord wants it to be for us all of our days, not just that day. I remember that day. You remember that day. Many of us are raising our hands saying, we remember the day. But the Word says He wants all our days to be like that. He wants all of our days for us to recognize, to love being with Him, being together. Not just this special Palm Sunday, but every day. All of our days. Amen. Pastor Mandy. Pastor Mandy. Can I say something to add on to Hang that? on, Jerry. Okay. Uh, Deidre's going to add on. Just something to add on to that. Because like you're going with witnessing, like you said, the same thing with me. I think it's also another way yes. for those to bring, for others to believe exactly. that God has brought the super yeah. to exactly. the natural. So yes. that everyone can see and make him more tangible. Amen. Yes. I know. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. That's good. Amen.
Lord, we thank you. You are the king, and you are the center of it all. We thank you that in the beginning that you created the heavens and the earth. We thank you, Lord, that you spoke the word, and all, all things came into existence. They were created by you, and they were created for you. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you created each one of us. Before we were ever in our mother's womb, you knew us, and you called us, and you set us apart for your purpose. And Lord, we love you with an everlasting love. But we can love you because you first loved us. We thank you, Lord, that all the questions that this world has, that you're the answer to them all. Lord Jesus, you've told us by your word that if we will seek you, that we will find you. If we will seek you with all of our heart. And Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness. That while we were yet sinners, that you came and you died for us. You are the lamb slain from the foundations of the world. And we thank you that you rule and reign with all power, dominion, and might. Right now you sit at the right hand of God the Father and you judge the quick and the dead. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We give you praise this day as we celebrate this Palm Sunday, as we celebrate this day declaring you're coming into Jerusalem for the last time. We declare how great is our God that you had the plan for all human beings. You, you are the answer. So Lord, today we honor you. We give you praise, glory, and adoration. But we do not live for you just on one day a week. We live for you each and every day. You have saved us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for redeeming us from the curse of the law of sin and death. Thank you for saving me, Lord Jesus. 38 years ago, you saved me. You changed my life. You radically changed my life. And I give you all the glory and all the honor, Lord. And I praise you for it. Now, Lord, as we're preparing to pay our tithes and give our offerings to you, we thank you that you've redeemed us back to the Father. We thank you that you've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you that once again we are restored back to the Father, the one who knew us before we were in our mother's womb. We're restored back, and we can cry, Abba, Father. But not only have you redeemed us back to the Father, but you've told us that we're joint heirs with you in your inheritance. And we know that the nations of this earth, they belong to you. And right now, gathered around your throne, are men, women, and children from every nation, every tongue, every tribe and every kindred and they're worshiping you in spirit <laughs> and they're worshiping you in truth and Lord if that's what heaven looks and sounds like that's what we the church ought to look and sound like right here on this earth and Lord Jesus we sang the song a moment ago we call to the winds of the four corners of the earth we call to the north the south the east and the west we call to the four winds and say, give up those that are coming to the kingdom. Give up those that are being saved. <laughs> we thank you. They come with glad and sincere hearts. Right here at celebration, our doors are thrown open. We reach out daily, sharing your love, mercy, and grace with a world that doesn't know you. <clears throat> and we call them. We call them to the kingdom. We thank you, Lord. We pray for a last day outpouring. We pray for a third great awakening in our nation. We need you, Lord. <coughs> we need you. We pray for those in authority.
authority over us. We pray for our president, vice president, the Congress, the cabinet, the Supreme Court. We pray for all of our state authorities. We pray for Governor Cooper and all the other governors. We pray for all of our local authorities. We pray them and their households be born again. May they be baptized in your Holy Ghost. May the Word of God be a lamp unto all of our feet and a light unto all of our paths. And together may we all walk a highway of holiness. Now, Lord, in celebration, we don't want to just hear the Word. We want to act on it, reap the harvest of it. Right now, we're paying tithes, giving offerings. Everyone's named their seeds. We're calling for households to be saved. We're calling for yokes to be lifted, burdens be removed. And right now we give, it's given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men and women pour back into our bosom so that we can give again. We declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So Lord, we call souls, souls, souls to your kingdom. We declare bodies are healed, yokes are lifted, burdens are removed. But above all, the name of Jesus lifted up, exalted, and glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You're free to come and give.
announcements. Remember on Wednesday, we'll be having a service here at the uh, church. We'll be having uh, our His Passion Evangelism class will continue. And uh, we'll also have children's services here, having uh, things for children and youth as well. And we invite you to come and be here. Come next Sunday morning, we'll be celebrating Resurrection Sunday! Hallelujah! Amen. Anybody been radically saved? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for his salvation. We'll be celebrating also the Women's Summit coming up. Uh, There's sign up for that. Uh, We'll pass that around uh, maybe next Sunday as well. But uh, you can go to your bulletin, look up things, see it also online as well. But what a glorious time to be alive and in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sweetie. We got special music. Yes, and, yes amen. We do. That's all our announcements. That's does any does uh, anybody need to share? Anybody need to the got a testimony you want to share? Yeah, just with the, yes. the cupcake thing. Yes, I figured there, there were more the, announcements. The, Sorry about the that. In the back. Can I have the um, And what we are yeah. just doing is. Um, if you'll step up here, that yeah. way they can Honey, see can you in here. Uh, yes, just with the uh, just with the cupcakes, we have a uh, Lenny's got it. And so the the regulars are a dollar fifty. The uh, large, the jumbos are two fifty. We've got our classics: the vanilla, vanilla, chocolate, chocolate, and yeah. the gourmet. This con- time is um, red velvet, and of course, it's for Mother's Day. We're taking uh, up orders, and um, everything has to be all orders and all things paid for on the. F- fourth Sunday this month, which is 424, yep. and this way this Amen. gives us plenty of time to get with people if we need to Amen. as far as changing anything, and I like to call it balancing the cupcake budget so that Amen. everything is prepaid and everything will s- flow smoothly with just only pick up on that day for Mother's Day, and thank y'all so much. Amen. We thank y'all so yes, much for doing those cupcakes so, as well. So, so good. Amen. 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 Audio and visual, they're uh, looking for volunteers that want to be a part of that ministry. Maybe you're somebody who's like, I like more behind the scenes type of stuff. Plug in. Plug in. There's a place for you within that ministry. Also on the worship choir for those who would like to be part of special music. We do special music each Sunday. If that's something you're wanting to step into, please, please let me know. I'd love to uh, put you in or we do our calendars quarterly and would love to uh, have you share in special music then we're also developing special special worship choir that we're going to be expanding we're going to have some risers right. over here because this is getting full but we want to for those that want to be involved in that please let Christina or myself know we would love 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 for you to be a part amen. of that amen That'll be uh, awesome. yes on the happy birthday, we do have special happy birthday for our grandson, yes. Jackson. He's turning five. Amen. And who else is it? Somebody else I mentioned a birthday. I think Derek had a birthday this yes. week. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. okay, God, you are really, you want this song sung. And I love any song that talks about the name of Jesus. Amen. Any song that talks about his name, that proclaims his name. And that's what this song is all about. And uh, it's a prayer. It's a beautiful, beautiful prayer song. 
but Jerry's probably got more to share about. But I did want to share that because I thought that was just very also, Cindy beautiful. Also, Cindy Jordan has said it. Well, then there's more. three. <laughs> so there are three. I mean, this song was bound to come. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. 
Hallelujah. What a beautiful song. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you, Pastor Vanji. Thank you, worship team. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to dismiss our children to children's church at this time. And uh, hallelujah. How many of you can remember your first Resurrection Sunday after you got saved? Anybody can remember it? Amen. Hallelujah. I saw, I saw Resurrection. I saw Easter. It was no longer Easter. It was Resurrection because I had been resurrected from the dead. Not one amen. Was there anybody else that was dead? Scripture says we were all dead in our sins. And the moment that Jesus came in, he resurrected me. When he came out of that grave, we came out of that grave. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an awesome and mighty God we do serve. I want to share with you this morning uh, something that just really hit my heart, and the Lord was taking me back as I was preparing for uh for Sunday and praying, and he was reminding me of a class that I had back in Bible college, and uh, I was one of those older students. I had already finished school, and uh, I'd gone off, and I was working, and I got saved. Jesus found me, and when he found me, he turned my life around, and uh, I kind of ran from the Lord after being saved because he was telling me to do something and I was like, I'm too old. I'm too old. I'm too old. Anybody has the Lord ever told you to do something and and you go, well, I can't. I can't because. I can't because. I can't because. Well, that was me. I was telling the Lord I was too old to do that. (laughs) And uh, yesterday I had uh, an honor, one of the... uh, I finally answered the Lord's call to go to Bible college. And uh, he had to reveal himself to me in numerous ways. And yesterday I had communication with one of the young men that I met. Here I was. I was, my goodness, baby, I guess I was 28 by the time I went back to Bible college, went to Bible college. And I met a young man that was 19 years old, and he and I had communication yesterday. And what a blessing that was to to talk with him, and uh, we're opening up some communication, and I look forward to talking with him in the future. But I want to share with you what the Lord's been speaking to my heart. As my wife had shared, uh, tomorrow is uh, one of our grandson, our middle grandson, Jackson's birthday, and he's going to be five years old. And uh, let me tell you, the moment a birthday happens, it doesn't matter who it is in the family, he wants to know. Who's the next birthday? And then he goes, how long to my birthday? And uh, he's been asking that question for quite a while now. And uh, But we're going to be celebrating his birthday today, and uh, we're looking forward to that. But in looking also at this day, the Lord does nothing by chance. Everything God does is with purpose. And everything that God does has great purpose. You and I exist, and we've shared this for years. You and I exist, and we're alive at this time in history. For such a time as this, for such a time as this, we exist on this planet. And we have been called with great purpose. Turn with me this morning, if you will, to the book of Exodus. I want to share some information with you. and. Hopefully it's a blessing to you. The book of Exodus, the 12th chapter. (coughs) The 12th chapter. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be the beginning of months to you. It is to be the first month 
of the year to you. Tell all the congregation of Israel, on the tenth day of this month, they are to take a lamb or a young goat for themselves, according to the size of the household of which he is the father. A lamb or a young goat for each household. Now, if the household is too small for a lamb to be consumed, let him and his next-door neighbor take one according to the number of people in the household, according to what each man can eat. You are to divide the lamb. Your lamb or your young goat shall be perfect without blemish or bodily defect. A male, a year old, you may take it from the sheep or from the goat. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to slaughter it at twilight. Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorpost and on the lintel above the door of the houses in which they eat it. They shall not eat the meat that same night roast. They shall eat the meat that same night roasted in fire, and they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it in fire, both its head, its legs, along with its inner parts. You shall let none of the meat remain until the morning, and anything that remains left over until morning you shall burn completely in the fire. Now you are to eat it in this manner. Be prepared for a journey with your loins girded, that is, with your outer garments tucked into the band, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand. You shall eat it quickly. It is the Lord's Passover. For the Lord will pass through the land of Egypt on this night and will strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both male and animal. Against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment, exhibiting their worthlessness. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the doorpost of the houses where you live, when I see the blood, I shall pass over you, and all afflictions and no afflictions shall happen to you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the understanding by your sweet Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the Passover lamb. And Lord, this day, may we have ears to hear and eyes to see by the Spirit of the living God. So Lord, may we be ready, may we be clothed in righteousness, may our feet be shodded with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and Lord, may our staff be in our hands so that we can stand firm as we travel this journey of life. So we pray all these things in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. As it said right here in the beginning, this month shall be the beginning of months to you. The Hebrew calendar is not as the uh, our modern calendar, which is a Greek calendar. The Hebrew calendar begins with the month of Nisan. It begins in what we would call April, but it begins on with the first day of Nisan, and it says, and on the tenth day. The tenth day of Nisan is actually beginning, because remember our days begin at midnight to midnight, 
the Jewish calendar, the Jewish day began at sunset to sunset. So about 6 to 6 is when the Jewish day begins. So tonight at 6 p.m. is the beginning of the 10th day of Nisan. It is the beginning of the 10th day of Nisan. Now, on the 10th day of Nisan, it's also known as the Day of the Lamb. It is the Day of the Lamb. When we were studying in Bible college, and I didn't know this before then, but we studied about the 10th day of Nisan. And on the 10th day, every household, was told, as the scripture says that they were doing in Egypt, and every household of Israel is to go and find the spotless lamb. And they are to bring that lamb in to their household on the 10th day of Nisan. The 10th day of Nisan is the day when the lamb would be brought into their home. Now, when the lamb was brought to them, it gave them four days to prepare for Passover. That lamb was, first of all, to be brought into their home. Now, anyone who has ever had children or anyone who has grandbabies, let me tell you what. You bring an animal to the house or into the house, and that animal all of a sudden becomes love. That animal becomes a part of the family. I've known many people that over the years, some have raised cows, some have raised sheep, different things, and they started naming the animal. Well, when you start naming an animal, all of a sudden it becomes difficult to want to kill that animal. Are you hearing me? So you bring this animal into your home. The second thing that it was required was to care for that animal. You were to feed that animal. You were to nurture that animal. That animal was to become a part of your household. The last thing you were to do is you were to sacrifice that animal. As I shared earlier, at 6 p.m. today is the beginning of the 10th day of Nisan. Remember, the Jewish day began at sundown. You must remember that. This year, Palm Sunday at 6 p.m. our time is actually the beginning of Nisan, the 10th day. What we call Palm Sunday is actually the day of the lamb so as you're thinking about this day of the lamb i want you to think about something we call it palm sunday what happened on palm sunday jesus came into jerusalem turn with me if you will i want you to go to the book of uh, zechariah zechariah you can hold your place if you want to there in exodus we may go back In the book of Zechariah, the ninth chapter, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Rejoice greatly. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king, your messianic king is coming to you. He is righteous and endowed with salvation, humble, and unassuming in submission to the will of the Father, riding on a donkey upon a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the war chariots of Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the bow of war will be cut off. He will speak words of peace to the nations, and his dominion shall be from sea to sea, absolutely endless, and from the river Euphrates to the ends 
of the earth, declares the Lord. He shall come in riding on a donkey. Turn with me now to the book of Matthew, the 21st chapter. (laughs) In the book of Matthew, the 21st chapter, it says, When they approached Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and at once you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you say, The Lord needs them. The master needs them. And without delay, the owner will send them with you. This happened so that Jesus was spoken by the prophet would be fulfilled saying, Till the daughter of Zion, the people of Jerusalem, behold your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. Then the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. Jesus was fulfilling the prophecy that was spoken by Zechariah, the prophecy spoken by Isaiah. Jesus was fulfilling the word of God that was spoken over 500 years earlier to them, declaring that Messiah was coming. Now, you say, okay, what does this have to do? Because Every person in Jerusalem had to go get a lamb without blemish. Where were the lambs born? Where were the lambs for sacrifice born? The lambs for temple sacrifice were born in a little town called Bethlehem. And in Bethlehem, they yearly gave birth to little sheep, lambs. And the scripture says that every household was to get a lamb one year old. One year old. And you're to bring that lamb into your house. Imagine on this very day, the city is packed because by law, there is something that they must do. Everyone is going to find their lamb for their household. Everyone is scurrying. The lambs are being gathered. The lambs are being carried. Some are driving their lambs to their homes, letting them walk. Most of them are carrying their lamb to their home. Jesus is approaching His home. You say, what do you mean? I thought Jesus was from Nazareth. Yes. But Jesus was approaching his father's house. Jesus was approaching Jerusalem. He was approaching the house of God. So he was coming in to his father's house. He was coming in to his father's house with great purpose. He was coming in to his father's house to fulfill what was spoken of in the book of Exodus. He was in the father's house on the in the chapter 12 of Exodus, and he was fulfilling the very word of God, and he was fulfilling what was spoken by Zechariah, he was fulfilling what was spoken by Isaiah, and he was coming in to his father's house. For four days, the lamb was being cared for in his father's house. 
Jesus told his disciples, two of them were to go and find the donkey. Two of them were to go and find the colt and the donkey together. Now, imagine this. You want to talk about trust. Here are the two disciples. They're going and they find a colt and a donkey. They look at the owner of the colt and the donkey and say, The Lord has need of them. And they take the man's colt and donkey. The others had been sent by Jesus to go and find the place of the upper room. They were going to prepare the upper room for Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem. Now when Jesus came to the upper room, he established his staying. He established where he would be. Understand this. <laughs> in the book of Exodus, it says that you are to prepare the lamb. And if you do not have enough people in your home for the lamb, you should go and get your neighbor to come to your house. We lose sight of this in society in which we live. In the Jewish culture, here in Exodus, is established, I am my brother's keeper. It had already been said by Cain killing Abel, he said, am I my brother's keeper? But here it is being established. When you go and you are preparing the lamb, if you have more than you need, get your neighbor to come into your house. We know that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, as the disciples came into the house, the custom was that you wiped you washed the world off of their feet. Anyone ever been in a foot washer? Let me tell you what. Depending on who you're having the foot washing with, it is one of the most humbling experiences you can ever have in your life. The disciples were coming in to... Jesus was having the party. Jesus was having the celebration. The disciples were his guests coming to the Passover meal. Jesus began to wash their feet. In washing someone's feet, it is a welcoming sign into the house. But also, in washing someone's feet, you are declaring, I will protect you. I will take care of you. So when the Jewish people were celebrating this and inviting their neighbors to come, they were telling them they would take care of them. You say, well, they were, they were slaves. They were living in Egypt. How were they going to take care of their neighbor? They were being the house of refuge. They were being the house where safety would dwell. For the one who was sacrificing the lamb in obedience to the Father would take and he would take hyssop and he would dip it in the blood of the lamb and he would mark the doorpost. What have my wife and I been saying to you for two years? Anoint your doors. Anoint your windows. Anoint your house. Anoint your property lines. Whether you're renting or whether you own, do what is to be done. And the scripture says, God said that he was going to go through Egypt and he was going to kill the first male child of every household. Why was it important him killing the first male child? 
life. First of all, he was disrupting the lineage. Didn't say he was killing all the children. He was disrupting the lineage. The lineage. So, God the Father, on the cross, Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, was giving His life as the sacrifice for all. The Father said, when I pass over, I will see the blood, and I will pass over your household. Oh, come on. I'm about ready to run myself. When I see the blood, I will pass over your house. Jesus, the Lamb of God, He did what was called to be done on this Passover meal. The Lamb of God was not anointing one doorpost and lintel. The Lamb of God was going to anoint all who would believe. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The Lamb of God. Why did He have to carry His cross? Because the blood had to be on the beams. Oh, are you you, you getting this? The tenth of Nisan is an important day, not only for the Jews, but also for us who believe. For it was on the tenth of Nisan that the Lamb of God went into Jerusalem. What did He do in those four days before His crucifixion? Number one, He went into the temple. He went into the temple. What did he do in the temple? He turned over the tables. Symbolically, what does that mean? He turned over tables of granite. It wasn't an eight-foot table like this, and he flipped it over. He turned over tables of granite. Why did he turn over tables of granite? He said, my house will be called, my father's house will be called a house of prayer, a house of communion. My father's house will be called a house of communion, not a den of thieves. Oh, come on. He's speaking to the holy thing. He's speaking to all things being holy, relationship, covenant with God. Covenant is a word that has gone out the window in in this world. Every day people break covenant. This world has has become a place of breaking covenant. But I can tell you, February 26, 1984, I entered into a covenant with my Father. And I will never, ever break that covenant. And because I don't break that covenant, I won't break my covenant with my wife. I won't break my covenant with my family. I won't break covenant with this church. Because of the covenant of the Father, if you break the covenant with the Father, you're willing to break other covenants. Are you hearing me? He went in. He cleansed the temple. 
that's the second thing that he did. He went, and he was walking. He was walking, and in his journey, he saw a fig tree in the tree. Scripture says that he wanted something to eat. Well, guess what? It wasn't the time of the fig, and Jesus cursed the tree. He said, you'll never produce again, and he walked on by it. And on his way back, the disciples saw the fig tree. And they said, look, it's withered from the roots. Jesus, he began to speak to them and talking to them about the authority of his word. This word is all authority. His word. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. All Scripture is God-breathed. All Scripture is good for reproving, is good for discipline, is good for doctrine. All Scripture is life. It is bread. It is the Word. It is water for our souls. He speaks concerning His Word and His authority. Scripture says that if any two of you will agree as touching anything, first of all, I must come into agreement with the Word. You have said. You have spoken. People, people they, they get antsy and afraid because it's like they're afraid that God's going to strike them dead if they go to the Father and they say, You have said. Are you hearing me? All God's promises are yes, and we speak the amen. We must come into agreement with what He has said. The Father loves for us to say, I know what you said. Sunil, so good to see you again this Sunday. But I can tell you, my brother, we declared over and over and over, and Lord, Sunil is in relationship with you. He is in covenant with you. And your word has said he will live and he will not die to declare the praises of God. We reminded God what he had promised Sunil. We reminded God what he had promised Harry Salem. We must remind Father what he has said. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, the enemy is crafty. The enemy is crafty. The enemy will try to hinder us. The enemy will try to get us off point. The enemy will try to get us off task. The enemy will try to separate us and make our lives so busy that we have no time to be with the Father. Come on. If you've been in the Lord, what gets away from us? Time. None of, but it's an amazing thing because time is one thing that everybody has the same amount of. Does anybody have 25 hours in a day? Does anybody just have 23 hours in a day? We all have 24 hours a day, and it becomes my responsibility for what I do with my time. The enemy wants us to separate ourselves from spending time with our Father. What happens when I spend time with my Father? our relationship becomes more and more intimate. Come on. It becomes more and more intimate. And in the intimacy with God, 
we speak to the Father and we're able to tell Him what He has said. Father, you declared. Father, I was speaking with someone the other day <laughs> and I made the statement to him. I said, if God did it for one of us, He does it for all of us. Hello? Does the Word of God not say God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? He does not change. He doesn't change. So if He does it for one, He does it for all. That's the power of God's Word. That's the power of the authority of Jesus. Jesus' power and authority was challenged. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The Lamb of God who came to the Father's house on the tenth of Nisan is the same Lamb of God that we must take into our house, must care for, must nurture. Come on. You have to nurture a relationship. You have to nurture being in covenant with God. So we go to His Word. We let Him speak to us. We let His presence fill our house. We speak His Word. We take communion. In actuality, in just a moment, we're going to share a meal together. As we sit to break bread, we are actually declaring the Lord's greatness and His goodness until He comes. For we are recognizing that everything comes from the hands of the Father. The latest thing hitting the wire is Food shortages, food shortages, food shortages. I'm not worried about it. My father fed four million people in the wilderness. Your father fed four million people in the wilderness. Every morning he put food outside of their tent. And what did he tell them? The same thing he told them on the Passover. By the end of the day, as long as it's good, Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Give it to us today, Lord. Give us what we have need of today. Yesterday's doesn't last for today. Today we have to have what God has for us. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. He came to this earth to die for my sin and your sin. He came to this earth to give His life so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Salvation does not come by just sitting in a church pew. Salvation doesn't come by sitting in a chair every Sunday. Salvation comes by asking Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and allowing His blood to cleanse you from all of your unrighteousness. 38 years ago, I had to ask Jesus to come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, and to cleanse me from my unrighteousness. Every day, I ask the Lord, Lord, search my heart. See if there's any wicked way in me. Lead me to your everlasting arms. Every day we must live for Him. You may be watching this video today. You may be streaming online with us right now. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is coming soon to get His church. Jesus Christ is coming soon to get His bride and to take us out of this corrupt world. The world doesn't know turmoil yet. Turmoil is getting ready to come to this world on a scale never seen before. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only answer. 
right now, he wants you to come. He wants you to come to him, asking, you, asking him to forgive you of your sins, come into your life. You believe that he was born, that you, he died on the cross for you, and he was buried in a tomb and rose from the dead on the third day. Right now, we're going to pray this prayer. I want you to pray with me if that's you. Say, Lord Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. I know you came to this earth to die for my sin. And right now, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to come into my heart and make me a new creature. I know you died in my place. You took my punishment on your back. And I thank you, Jesus. You gave your life for me. You were buried in a tomb, and on the third day you rose from the dead. So I receive you right now as my Savior and my Lord and my soon coming King. And from this day forward, I'm a new creature. I'll live for you and I'll serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're born again. If you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He died for your sin, and you prayed that prayer, you're born again. You're a new creature in Jesus Christ. Right now, we're going to take communion together. We do this every Sunday because we want to remember and recognize everything that He's done for us, and live for Him all the days of our lives. The Apostle Paul, he wrote to the church at Corinth, and he said, I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you, that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, He took bread and He broke it. And He said, This is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do it in remembrance of me. So Lord Jesus, right now, we come to you and we thank you that you are the Lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. We receive your body. And as we are taking this communion today, we thank you for the stripes that you bore for us. We thank you for your salvation. And we will eat of the bread and give you thanks until you come. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. And in the same manner, Jesus lifted up the cup and he said, this cup, it's a new covenant in my blood. As often as you eat of it, do it in remembrance of me. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for the new covenant of your blood. For what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The Lamb slain for the world. And we thank you, Jesus for your precious blood. As we partake of the cup, we do it in remembrance of you, giving you thanks always. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. You may partake of the cup. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your great salvation. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your healing power. Father, we still declare healing over Norma's body. We declare that by your stripes, Norma is the healed of the Lord. Strength return to Norma's body. We declare healing to Brenda's body. By Jesus' stripes, 
Brenda, you are the healed of the Lord. All sickness and disease be gone from your body in the name of Jesus. Rise up, be healed. You were healed, you are healed, and you will walk in health. We declare it by the word of the Lord. God, we also lift up Heather and we lift up Jackson. Yes. We come against this wet cough in the yes. name of Jesus. In the name of we Jesus. We come against any infirmity that's trying to attach itself to either yes. one of them in the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over both of them from the top of their heads to the soles, soles of, of their, their feet. feet. They are the healed of the yes. Lord. The strength of the Lord fills them now in yes. Jesus' name. In Jesus we thank name. you, Father God, that by the power of your stripes, the what you bore for us, it was appropriated for their yes. healing now. We thank you, yes. Lord God, that even now, at this moment, God, the healing power flows inside of them in the name of Jesus. And the we name thank of you Jesus. for it. Yes. We thank you for it, Lord God. Father, we want to thank you. We thank you for doctors and nurses. Yes. But, Father God, the wisdom that they have has only come from you. You are all wisdom. And we thank you, Lord. And, Father, we speak words of life. We speak words of healing yes. and wholeness. We declare shalom over households this day. We declare restoration. We declare restoring to families yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. We declare wisdom be given in situations. We declare children raised in the household of God. Yes. We declare that you are the one in whom we live, move, and have our being. And apart from you, we do not exist. You are the King of kings, the Lord of glory. Yes. We declare restoration yes. to eyesight in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Every vessel, every artery, yes. everything Strengthen. flowing, any veins flowing to eyesight, strengthened in the name of Jesus. In the name of every Jesus. Every crooked place made straight yes. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Complete healing flowing for Shed anybody who's battling in their ba -ba vision. Naturally yes. or spiritually, we call yes. it opened in the name, in of, the name Jesus of Jesus to see clearly. Yes. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. We declare hunger, spiritual yes. hunger yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Spiritual hunger return to these United hunger States of America. Amen. Spiritual hunger yes. return to those who declare that they are of the households of faith. Yes. Spiritual hunger in Jesus' and name. In Jesus. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Amen. We will walk a highway of holiness as you have declared in the name of Jesus. Ooh. We declare every household the blood of Jesus over every door, over every lintel. The blood of Jesus covers every home. Yes. Circulation in legs and yes. feet restored yes. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Total restoration to circulatory systems in Jesus' name. Yes. Where there where there's been a report given that that is ceasing and stopping, we come against it yes. in Jesus' name. In the name Everything of Jesus. Everything flows according to the word of God in your body. Yes. In Jesus' name, lines yes. up with the word of God right now. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, for circulatory <inaudible> systems in Jesus' name in Jesus that are being name, restored. Yes. They are being restored yes. right now in the right name now. of in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. We declare promotion. We walk in favor yes. with God and, and with man. man. Yes. 
start thanking the Lord for that promotion. Father, thank you for Jesus. Hmm. Father God, we declare that everything belongs to you. Every good, pleasing, and perfect gift comes from the Father above, and from the Father of light. It all belongs to you. We declare our buildings are built and paid for. Yes. We declare it opens up yes. supernatural. Supernatural. Yes. Mm. They who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom I trust, with great confidence and on whom I rely. For he will save you from the trap of the fowler, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinion. Under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. You will not be afraid of the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor of the destruction, sudden death, that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but no danger will come near you. You'll only be a spectator as you look on with your eyes and witness the divine repayment of the wicked as you watch safely from the shelter of the Most High. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels in regard to you to protect and defend and guard you in all your ways of obedience and service. They will lift you up in their hands so that you do not even strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because they set their love on me, therefore I will save them. I will set them securely on high because they know my name. They confidently trust and rely on me, knowing I will never abandon them. No, never. They will call upon me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I'll rescue them and honor them. With a long life, I will satisfy them, and I will let them see my salvation, declares the Lord of hosts. Amen and amen. We're so glad that you've been with us today. We're glad that you were able to come and be a part. We're going to pray a blessing over our meal in just a moment, and we want to thank each and every one of you that have come online to be with us. We pray the blessings of the Lord over your life. Stand with me, if you will. Everybody's welcome to stay and have lunch. We're going to have a marvelous time together in fellowship. Amen? Hallelujah. I pray the Lord will bless you. The Lord will keep you. I pray the Lord will make His face to shine upon you, lift up His countenance upon you, and give you peace both now and forever. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the country. Everything you put your hands to is blessed. Your barns are blessed. Your fields are blessed. Your kneading boards are blessed. You're blessed when you rise up. You're blessed when you lie down. You're the head. You're not the tail. You're on top. You're not on the bottom. You're the redeemed of the Lord. And the redeemed of the Lord said, Amen and amen. And Father, we ask you to bless this food. Make it nourishment to our bodies. Bless those hands that have prepared it. And Lord, May all of our conversation be pure and pleasing in your sight, and you be exalted in all things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you once again for coming and being with us. If you do not have a church home, we welcome you to come be a part of celebration. We meet right here at New Dimension Charter School, and we meet at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. 
6.30 on Wednesday night. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. God bless.